Good afternoon, everybody. It's Eric Amwapabwadu here from African Art Talks with Eric. And today I'm so happy to come your way. It's another Saturday, Saturday afternoon. And the month is going so quickly within the year. It's May already. So excited to come your way. So excited to bring you everything to do with African art. We're going to talk about contemporary African art. We're going to talk to you about everything that is to do with the creativity of the African people. And I'm so excited to bring you my guest today. But before I do so, I'm just going to play the intro again so that you can invite all your friends. Invite everyone. Share the link. Uh, the one on Facebook, share the link. The one on YouTube. And get everyone to come around. Everyone that's interested in creativity. Absolutely everyone. So let's take it again from the intro and let's invite friends to come on board. Hey, 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 isn't it good to come your way again with everything to do with African art? Put your comments in the comment box and I'll give you a good shout out. But also don't forget to ask every question that you need to ask, you know, to do with this artist that I'm going to bring on board. Uh, once I start showing his work, you know what he's made of. I've followed him for quite a long time. Uh, I've got C. Clay, C. Clay, my good friend, my good artist friend, uh, for all the way from Ghana, says, awesome, awesome. So thank you, C. Clay. I've interviewed C. Clay before in the past, but I am very, very sure that I'll bring him back to this show again because he's a fantastic artist and he's somebody who preaches the uh, art of love, basically, and he gives a lot back to his community. So shout out to C. Clay Art. Uh, thank you so much for showing up today. I'm going to just go on YouTube as well and see whoever is there. Anybody that just links up right now, just say hello in the comment box and let's know where you are actually tuning in from. I'll be so grateful if you can do that for me. Let's make sure that you are here. Kofi Binji, how are you doing? Kofi has also joined me right now. Right, so let's go back to my channel on YouTube and I'll give a big shout out to everybody that's joined right now. In the meantime, as I'm doing so, invite everyone to come on board before I introduce my artist. Let's do so. Right. So thank you everyone that's joined on YouTube. Let us go back to today's episode. So today's episode is going to be fantastic. And as we normally do, I talk about the Edinkra symbols because you know, these are symbols that date back to the nine, early 18th century. And I don't want us to forget about the importance of this to our culture, the importance of the Edinkra symbol to our culture. So let's read a little bit about it and I'll show just one of them so that we can delve deeper into it. So if we talk about the Edinkra symbols, these are the symbols. And there's a kin in the Ashanti kin or the Akan tribe who initiated this. His name is Nana Kojo Ajima Edinkra. That is why it's called the Edinkra symbol. So his name was Nana Kojo Ajima Edinkra. And he reigned from 1810 to 1820, so 10 years to be precise. And during his time, he created all these beautiful African symbols, which these days are used for so many things. And I'll show you what they are used for. But today, the one that I want us to choose and talk about is this one and it's called Duyafi, Duyafi actually, Duyafi. So if you look at the symbol, uh, in the English translation is the wooden comb, wooden comb, Duyafi. And we're going to break the words into two. Duya in the tree language, which is most of the Akan people speak tree, almost all. Duya means a tree or wood or something that is wooden, Duya. And then afe, A-F-E, is the comb. Afe is comb. So when you combine both of them, 
It's called duafe. Duafe becomes this symbol. So duafe is the wooden comb. And it stands for feminine consideration or good feminine qualities such as patience, prudence, fondness, love, and care. So whenever you see this symbol, it, it represents what? The feminine aspect of our, our, our tribe, the qualities that the feminine gender brings on board. They bring patience. They bring prudence. They bring fondness, love, and care. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. So let's 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 just take it all in. Duafe is an Adinkra symbol, which stands for wooden comb, and it represents femininity, their love, their care, everything that comes with their patience. And I was talking about it being used in so many uh, items. So if you look at the picture on the screen nowadays, Adinkra symbols are used as jewelry. They are printed on T-shirts. They are even used on clothing, uh, rings, mugs, whatever, name it. Uh, this one, the one on the earring, has Duyafe combined with another symbol called the Jinyame. So you can be very creative with these symbols, but at the end of the day, this belongs to Ghana. And I'm so happy to present this back to yourselves. So isn't that beautiful that we've got symbols that date back from 1810, which is still being used and we are actually using it on materials that are very relevant to us today so that is where we are on this let's read one more comment so <laughs> c clay says come on lol so i gave him a good shout out and he's so happy about it but today's guest uh, is somebody that i've known on facebook for a very 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 long time and i like his work i mean his work speaks so much to me. He is so bold in his strokes. And I've come to admire the techniques that he uses. Obviously, he comes from Ghana. And he has exhibited all over, all over the place. Without much ado, let's not waste time. Let's bring on Joseph Adibleku. He's popularly known as Joe Black. Joe Black. Hey, hello, Joe Black. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing, too? Great. I'm doing fantastic, and I'm so happy to have you on my show today. Uh, as we talked about when I was trying to busily get you on board, I really admire your work, and you're doing a great job in the art circus of Ghana. So today we're going to flow. I just want to know more about your work. My audience, my fans, wants to know more about what you do. So what? who is Joseph, if I may ask? I mean... People want to know who you are so that when they meet you in the street, they can identify with you before we even talk about your artwork. Okay. Uh, so, uh, hello, every, everyone watching us. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me start by Joseph is an artist from Ghana, West Africa. Yes. Yeah, he's from a family of 10 and proud of oh, wow. that. <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big family, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I was born in Accra, bred and raised in Accra. So I've lived okay. all my life. Which, which part of Accra is that? Uh, that is uh, Ashamane State. Good. In we'll the talk more about that later. <laughs> Eastern part of uh, Ghana. Sorry. Great. Yeah. And then as you were, uh, let's take it from the beginning. You know, you, you've done art for a very long time, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Tw 20 years plus? Yeah, two decades now. My goodness. My goodness. Yeah. That is amazing. Wow. Wow. Sure. And what really got you into art? I mean, if you've done art for two decades now, I can imagine that you started really early in life. Is it something that's God-given? Is it a passion? How did you really get into art? Yeah, as, as you rightly said, uh, it's God-given talent. Okay. Uh, I discovered that when I was a teenage, when I was, when I was young, around at the age of five, I started wow. drawing. Yeah, at the age okay. of five, I started, uh, started drawing on paper. Yes. On the floor, on walls. <laughs> Every, everywhere <laughs> everywhere so that's how the whole thing started 
Mm. And mm. and uh, due to that, I uh, as times went on, I developed an early interest in that. Right. And mm -hmm. I never gave yeah, I never gave up, gave up on that. I continue with it. And I had few, I mean, support from my mom, especially my mom. Right. She has been the influence behind me becoming a full artist. Wow. She used to she used to encourage me a lot. When I when when I started drawing on paper on the wall, on the floor, all over the place. Yeah. Then anytime, anytime, anytime she sees me drawing there, she goes like, "Wow, that's my son! Look how she's." That's my son. Thing. Yeah. So that that really encouraged me mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to to pursue my ambition as an artist. That is amazing. I mean, it's good to have moms that will just encourage us to to yeah. do our best, isn't it? Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah. uh, so with that, uh, regards to that, I uh, I never gave up on my talent. Mm -hmm. I keep on developing an interest in that field. Right. And uh, sure, I, I, I continue with it because uh, as a child, I, I had knew that is, is something that I am born to do. That's right. Yeah, I am born to do. So I never deviated from it. I stick to it. With a little support and little encouragement I had from my mom and other friends around me, I, I just decided not to let that dream bear, uh, just to pursue it. Mm. Mm. So I, as I journey on in life, I had to uh, kind of uh, feather, <laughs> feather, feather myself in an art school. And that is not skill, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. So in terms of, in terms of um, you, you were quite lucky. You knew what you wanted. Not a lot of yeah. people actually know what they want, even though they are creative. And um, I, I normally say in my interviews that African parents do not really encourage their kids to go into art. Why? Because we have the perception that there's no money in that profession. But what do you think made your mom stand behind you and really encourage you in that? Is it? Is it? I'm not sure. You you tell me. <laughs> I, well, I, I I realized that my parents were the type that they don't kind of impose things on us. Okay. Okay. They give us our free will to kind of pursue our dreams and ambitions. So That's it. I was so lucky in that. Aspect. That really helps. That really, really, really helps. That really well, helps. So, yes. I believe that, yeah. Wow, wow. So, basically, primary school, then you went to which secondary school? Did you take up art in secondary school as well? Well, well after after primary school, I went straight to a college. Did you? Wow. Yeah, I went straight to okay. a college. Which college is that? So that if anybody who wants to get into art, you know, wants to know which which college, let's give them a shout out. Uncle College of Art. Uncle College Uncle of Art. Okay. Is it still there in Ghana? It's no more there. They closed it down. Ah, Quite that's a shame. That is a shame. <laughs> yeah, because you know, a lot of people go down the very traditional route where they go sure. through uh, JSS, SSS before they even discover what they want to do. But if we have such a college that would actually mentor, take up those who are very talented very early in life and bring them up, that, that is something that's really good. And I think you and I have to look into it and see what we can do for Madagascar <laughs> and for the African continent. Oh, yeah, sure. Definitely, yeah, sure. definitely, definitely. Great. So let's talk about you went to the college. Um, what really... Did you have any masters over there that you looked up to, people that mentored you, took you under their wings? Because I know it can still be challenging. You can be talented all you like, but if you don't have people that take you under their wings, it can, it can be quite challenging. Did you have any such? Sure, I did. I did. I did. Uh, when when I started, I, I, I saw some few artists that were doing quite well. Okay. That's okay. I looked up to them. They were my this way kind of mentor yes i was i was inspired by their kind of style that they they do 
So I just okay. try to kind of find my way around what I've already had yes. in me. So they mm -hmm. inspired me. I draw the inspiration from their, their kind of style of work. So right. I, I would you... say I was fortunate. Yes, I was fortunate to have such people around me. So oh, that that's brought great. me this far. Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you give us a few names of some of the people that really inspired you as you were growing up in your career? Yes, that is uh, one is uh, Professor Black Glover. Of course, of course. We can't, we can't miss <laughs> out. <laughs> we can't miss out, Professor. Seriously. Sure. And uh, Wiz Kudo. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. And I mean, Wiz, Wiz is somebody I look up to as well. He, he, those yeah. Professor Glover, with Kudo, those people are up front there. They, they paved the way for us to actually follow suit, isn't it? Yeah, sure, Larry O2 Larry as well. Oh, yes, my good old friend Larry. <laughs> and, and many more. So these were mm. the people that I was kind of inspired by. Inspired very, by very true. Mm. 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 So talking about inspiration, um, were there people outside of Africa that you also, you know, people like the Van Goghs or the, who else can we mention? Did you actually look outside of Africa for inspiration as well? I, I did. Okay. I did, but not that much as here in Ghana. All right. Not that much as here in Ghana. Mm. With the name you mm. mentioned, uh, their kind of work is quite, I mean, interesting. Yes. They, they did motivate me as well. They did inspire me as well. But I was working with them in Ghana, Africa. Your, your as well. environment. That's environment. it. Yeah, That's environment. Yeah. Uh, mm. kind of, uh, what it depicts, what it portrays as an African. Yeah. Yes. Ghanaian. Yeah. Exactly that. Exactly that. So have you got a word for up and coming? Let's, let's take it from Ghana. And, and look at Africa as a whole, would you have any words of encouragement for up-and-coming artists? Uh, because I'm sure you would have gone through challenges on your way up. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, well, what I would like to tell the up-and-coming uh, artist is that uh, I believe that I, I saw mine as a calling. Right. Yeah, I was fortunate to realize that, that mine was a calling. Yeah. And, and due to that, that made me stood firm in what That's I right. believed in, yeah, in what I believed in. So I did not allow the challenges, circumstances around me to weigh me down. Mm. Because I look, I look beyond and above the odds. The odds, yes, yes. Yes. Odds. yes. So what I, I would like to tell them is that uh, it's a calling. That's true. And yeah, it's a calling. And I've had a lot of friends that I started with, I was in the college with, but mm. now there were no found in the art fraternity. I mean, they've all gone the their separate. Yes, they've yeah. branched to different different professions. Yeah. So uh, it's a calling. It, it it takes the determining heart and the spirit to pursue and continue what you believe in and what you're doing as an artist. So I will encourage them that if you have uh, the gift, if you have the gift, the gift alone will not uh, kind of uh, sustain you. In times of challenges, mm. but it was a determination and the true. drive, and, and and what you believe in, especially your values and your principles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a lot. Because I mean, on your that's, that's, yeah, you, carry on. Yeah, because on your journey to, I mean, being a successful as an artist, mm. as you, you asked earlier, you face a lot of obstacles. That's right. And, those obstacles are not there to kind of kill your dreams, but they are there to ensure that whether you believe in what you are doing, yes, or you believe in yourself as an artist, mm -hmm. and the and the and the and the and the and the information or the inspiration that you you, you want to carry out there to the people to the so world. Yes, should, yes. Do you always say it as a ministry? I say it as a ministry. Yeah, I have my audience. Who, who are being inspired by what I do, who are mm -hmm. being encouraged by what I do. Art, art speaks to the soul. Yes. Yeah, art speaks to the soul. So if you know that you have that urge as an artist, mm -hmm. up artist, 
don't let anyone, let me repeat it, mm -hmm. don't let one or any circumstances discourage yeah. you or deter you right. from being who you want to be as an artist. Just that be is so focused. profound. Be focus. That is so profound. Yeah, that is focus. so profound. And so what I'm getting... I've, I've, I've never regretted of being an artist. You haven't. I <laughs> love it. it. Because I, I was, was going to ask you, I was going to ask you if you were to come back as, you know, Joe Black, will you still have pursued this career? And you've answered me I right there. I was still pursuing. <laughs> I was still so, pursuing. <laughs> great, great, great. I'll take a few comments. I'll just give a few shout out to those who've joined us. And as you can see on screen, Esther Kaki says, I see you, brothers. Hi, Esther. Hope you're doing well. I will be bringing you on next. Don't worry, Esther. <laughs> you're coming on next. <laughs> sure. Esther is also an artist and part of the Pito group. This group is painting in the open and it's in Ghana. So check them out. They are doing a great job. I've got Abbas Moro who says, hello, good evening. How's Abba Abbas Moro? Edward Jan from the UK says, 20 years. Wow. So Edward was talking about you having 20 years behind your back as an artist. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And we've got Ni Jata Jata says, big up to you all. Hi, Ni. Hope you're doing well. And then my lovely wife, Marie, says, good job, husband. Hi, Marie. Hope you're doing well Hi, as man. well. <laughs> and Jose in Chroma Boateng says, art is life. And art is beautiful. Exactly that. Exactly that. And then C. Clay earlier on said, awesome. So if you've got any questions for Joseph, do well to just type it in and I will read out your comments, your questions for him. But now let's move on to your work because the advice that you've given up and coming artist is profound. And the key word that I got from it is focus, focus, yeah. focus, focus, regardless of what you know, the challenge is, just focus on the end goal. Because if you see it as a calling, you will see it through to the end. Thank you for that advice. That's really good. Right. So after college, what happened? Yeah, after college, I I decided to kind of zoom into art as a full time. That's it. Full time, straight yeah. away. I had nothing in mind apart from the art, the art, the art. So I went straight into the art. So you so, had no plan B. I had no plan B. That's it. All that I had in mind. That's it. That's so after it. college, after college, I I did a three years diploma in art. Okay. Okay. Which, which institution was that? That is, uh, no, same at Anchor College. Oh, Anchor College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are, yes, you carried on with that. Same Anchor College. So after oh, after, right. after after college, I just went it's three years straight. Three years straight. And then did you have to, after the diploma, did you have to further it or you went straight just practicing? I went just straight practicing. That's it. That's it. I mean, art, art is not about the number of degrees you've got in art and all that. It's about the real work. It's the hands-on, isn't it? It's about the delivery. It's and about the, the impact, delivery. delivery. And the impact, impact you make. Society. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So now I'm going to show some of your work because we need to know what impact you are making. And I love your work. I mean, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Viewers, oh, wow. if you yeah. like this, just appreciate him with likes. Let him feel loved because his work is so powerful. Look at the one on the left. Can you tell us a bit about it? It's so, so powerful. Um, number one, what medium do you use to create your, your work? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I use acrylic, acrylic on canvas. Amazing. Sure. So these works are acrylic on canvas. I love that as well. I, I, I don't use any other medium at the moment than acrylic on canvas. Okay. I do use acrylic and oil. All right. Okay. Yeah, acrylic on okay. oil. And, and how do you find, for those of us who are, you know, those who are not artists and would like to know more about art, what is the difference between acrylic and oil? And why do you prefer one over the other? Oh, okay. Uh, I okay, let me come. I don't prefer one than the other, but I use okay. I use I use both mediums. Right. Both mediums to work. As I okay. when I'm 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 moved to I'm moved to That's using it. it. Yeah, yeah. So uh so the difference between acrylic and oil is that uh they are colors though, but they have different 
different kind of uh, feel to it, but, texture. Yeah, kind of body pigments. Uh, so uh, okay. all is, is made out of uh, it's a water based element. Yeah. Yes. And the yeah. oil is it also has it yes, it also has its element. So That's right. both both of these colors are has different different qualities on their own. Qualities. Mm. Mm. So acrylic, yep. acrylic is water based, oil That's is oil it. based. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So now let's talk about your work because it's so powerful. And what inspired you to paint this? Oh, okay. What inspired me to paint this is uh, in in this life we all, we've all got dreams and ambitions, mm. and it depends on how we all see it to be. Okay. Some might have it easy in life, yeah. and some might not have it that easy in life. Yes. So, with regards to what we are pursuing as individuals, we all have this kind of uh, the mindset of the kind of environment in which we live in. Mm -hmm. okay. So many, many of us think about the environment a lot and uh, we at times allow the environment to dictate for us. True. So the, the work on my left, the blue with the one face in it, talks about vision. Okay. Talks about vision. And it depicts a man who has got a vision. Right. Who is, who is so determined and who is so focused mm -hmm. in his vision. Yeah. Most people have great vision in this life. But but they are they are kind of not stable. True. They are not stable. Other things try to hit them. Yes. They are not focused. They mm -hmm. are unstable. Mm -hmm. They allow circumstances and situation to kind of divert the kind of vision that they've got. Yes. So this painting especially depicts a man who has got a great vision but still remain focused and is mm. determined. Because when you look at the facial expression, it even tells on in the eye. He's really focused, isn't it? Looking straight he, ahead. Straight ahead. Not ready to let, let, let it go or not ready to allow any circumstance to dictate yes. for him. Mm -hmm. And most of the times we try to look into so many things with our two eyes. Right. We got one eye. I don't mean physically. An Obviously. Eye. One, but I mean with your vision. The vision. Stay focused with your vision. That's it. Forge That's on it. and go for it. That is a powerful art. And I love the, the color scheme that you've yeah. used as well. Uh, it doesn't really, you know, contradict itself. And I love that. Uh, course of time, uh, let's move on to the second one. Okay. The second one on the right-hand side. What story are you telling in there? Uh, sure. The, the second one is a bit similar to what I just said about the one on my left. And right. The, the title is Eyesight. Eyesight. Okay. Eyesight. And it depicts a man who also looked on. That's it. To what the goals that he has said before him. Yes. He sees, he sees something greater ahead of him. Ahead, yes. Sure. He sees light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. 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 He is also focused. Yes. He is also determined. Mm -hmm. He is also kind of not allowing the circumstances to yeah. dictate for him or to decide for him. That's so right. with his outside, he looks and he sees beyond the circumstances that surround him. Mm. Mm. That and you can really him. tell from, from how he's looking 
far ahead. You know, he's looking up. And that's normally right. when people are people are thinking, that's the pose they, they actually do, isn't it? That's the expression. They, 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 they. That's the expression. That's the expression. Beautiful. Right. I'll be showing more of these because I think you've got more of these um, paintings to do with focus, looking ahead. Do these follow the same trend as well? Yeah, this also follows the same trend. The one on my left is titled Great Expectation. Amazing. Amazing. Great expectation. I'm I mean, your, like your, 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 combination your, of, your combination of colors is really amazing. Um, and, and you really stand out in the boldness of your strokes. Thank you. Really, really good. That's really, really good. Thank you. Now, the question, the question is... When you're painting, were, were all these series done in oil or did you use acrylic for some of them? Okay, some of them are acrylic. For instance, the first two that you showed and these two that you've now shown, they are acrylics. Okay. And what about also, these? Okay. These also are acrylic. Amazing. Amazing. So with, so and in terms of size... Come again? In terms of... In terms of size, do you love big paintings or small paintings? What, what give us some relevance of size here? I actually love big paintings. Great. With with, with the sense that whatever I have got that I want to show out there to the world, I want it to be seen in a in a larger canvas. Yeah. To, to send out the information that I want to give out there to the world. So I prefer painting on large canvas. That's amazing. And I can see within these paintings that you've really um, honed in on the message. Uh, let's have a look again. And I'd like to ask you why you keep painting about focus in life. You are delivering that message. Is it personal? Or is it because you've seen people around you not focused? I believe it's, it's, it's personal. Great. This is personal. This is from within. This is from my spirit. Yes. So everything that I talk about about my painting is personal. Amazing, amazing. Life, life, life is full of ups and downs. Mm. So we need focus and dedication to overcome the obstacles that are ahead of us. That is very true. And you know, in our time, there's a lot more distraction than in the past because of the internet. Because of the internet. So you can easily be distracted. Uh, you can see others doing things that you might be distracted to go and follow their path, for instance. So if you have, as you said, your own calling, it is worth focusing so that you can actually follow, go on your own journey, isn't it? That's right. That's, that's, that's exactly right. right. And these paintings really depict that. Right. Let's move slightly away from that. I can see that you've got these abstract paintings and they are rendered very beautifully. Uh, <laughs> what are you trying to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> These are also one of my favorites. Uh, they are and, beautiful, I would say. I love the colors as well. I did it. Yeah. I did it. My love the colors. I'm more, I'm more yeah. into color. And the shapes. You know, you've got the these shape. circular shapes running all the way through. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, uh, so uh, the work on the left left side talked about is titled Matters Arising. Matters Arising, okay. And it talks about it talks about every issue that uh, kind of confronts us in this life. Right. Sure. So uh, uh, in life we all don't wish for any bad thing to happen. Mm. As human as we are, we should bear it in mind that anything can happen unexpectedly. That's right. So we should just kind of embrace ourselves, prepare ourselves for that. Mm -hmm. In case of any matter that rises in your journey of life, you just have to kind of look at what is within you. Right. The, the strength that God has given to you. Yes. And the wisdom that God has given to you to always solve 
matters around you. When matters right. arrive, well, mm. you don't just come into it, but you analyze them and come up with a, a, a great solution. Beautifully put. Beautifully put. So the challenges of life cannot just be addressed by ourselves, but we need to look within our spirit to be able to address these things. We don't just have to rush to, to solve problems. We need to think analytically to be able to... I mean, you are quite so philosophical as well, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, every, I, I would say that every creative person is philosophical. And um, I can gather that you rely more on your spirit being than anything That's else, right. isn't it? That's right. That's that, right. that is one key over there. So all creative watching us or those who are interested in embarking on a creative journey, that is one tip right there. You can't just do it by yourself, but you have to rely on a higher being, a higher power, which is God, to inspire you, to give you messages to give to the rest of the world. So I like that. I like that about, about yourself. Uh, there was one more painting within that that I want us to talk about. The other abstract on the right hand side. And this time round, I can see you're using warm colors and you've got messages in there as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, this, this painting also is titled uh... Are you there? Yes. Okay, so this painting is also titled Imperfection. Imperfection, okay. So uh, it depicts a, a lady. Right. A lady, a black, a black woman for an African for that matter. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it depicts a lady who in a society people might, might see as someone who is a bit, in quote, ugly. Okay, I'm just going to zoom into this message, uh, just this one, so that we can have a look at it. So let me just put this on screen, add to screen, and then we can discuss it in full. Right, okay. so keep talking. I want to just zoom in because there are some text in here that I want us to talk about. Okay. So people might depict him, uh, the lady, as ugly, isn't it? As ugly. Okay. Because of imperfection. Yeah. Okay. But I also believe that with, with that, every woman or lady deserves love, no matter mm. how imperfect they are. That's right. So these are the That's messages right. that these are the messages that she puts out there. Okay. That no matter how I also deserve deserves love or deserve love to be loved. That's it. That's it. This it is beautiful. That, yeah, sure. Thank you. So the message, the message on this painting says that please don't stop loving me. That's right. So no matter right. how I, 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 personal, I love women a lot. Yes. I respect they are women. God, they a are God's lot. gift to us. They are God's gift to us. Yes. And they play a huge role in our society. Oh yes, we can't ignore that one. And take and they they, they make the world they make the world a better place to live in. Mm. So I mm. respect them so much. So let's take we've got this comment from Esther says, Wow, serious abstract. Esther, what we're trying to say is women play a major role. You are part of it, you play a major role in our society as well. <laughs> Great. So let's carry on. Yeah, so uh, with, with this piece, every woman deserves love. Mm. They deserve to be treated well. Yes. They deserve a better place in our society. Society. Mm -hmm. They need to be held in high esteem. Definitely. So uh, I, I just feel bad when I see men abusing women. That's true. It gets it gets so badly into me. Yeah, it yeah. Gets to it's something that we should we should constantly speak against because it's it's not you know any man that does that is a coward I should say it's it's not a cool thing to do at all. That's right, and it's a slave as well. Yes, yeah, a slave as well. So uh, women are special, no matter how they they they, they appear or the, mm -hmm. no matter how 
look. Yeah. They have something to make, they have something great, they have something beautiful within them. That's right. They can pick them up and make the best out of them. Yes. So that's what it yes. says. That's great. What beautiful works. Message is on point. It's about women, us treating women well, us not abusing them because they play a major role in this world. And you've communicated that really well. Right. So the next painting I'm going to show is quite different from the ones that you have shown up so far. And I think, do, are you, the question is, um, do you decide that you're going to do series different from previous ones or you are still discovering yourself as an artist? I believe I once believed that being an artist is all about discovery. Right. You don't end at one point. That's you true. Just move, discover yourself. We evolve, isn't it? That's it. That's it. So, uh, not moving from the old ones, but it's a discovery journey. That's it. And a process That's that I'm. But we, the message is still the same. The message is still the same. Right. So let's talk about these two. And um, let's talk about the message that you are still trying to give us through these. Okay. okay. So uh, the one on the left, the blue. Yes. Is titled Attitude. Attitude. Okay. Attitude. So uh, I have encountered <laughs> I'll, I'll let you see see his face as he talks about this i think this message yeah. is going to give us means a lot to him uh, so you've encountered uh, different people with different attitudes so <laughs> you gotta try <laughs> i thought as much yeah i have encountered i mean different ladies with different attitudes yeah. with yeah. different facial expressions right so this this is one of the uh facial expression that i got from one i so can I just, imagine just decided to put it on canvas and, and, and speak up wow wow yeah so these okay. are the facial expressions of the different attitudes as you go about your normal duties, these are pe some of the people that you've come across. That's right. And and are you trying to say, is it a positive attitude, negative attitude? What type are we looking at here? Well, I, I see it as a positive attitude. Great. Okay. Yes. Uh, so no matter how you you act towards me, yes, it's not about, it's not about what you did to me that defines who I am. It's about right. how I, I perceive it to be. Exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm, always, the, I'm always the positive type. That's it. The I mean, glass is either half full or half empty, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, and also you don't, you don't, you don't expect everyone to treat you uh, the same. That's true. That yeah. is true. So, uh, some are nice. There's that they don't know you. Yeah. Meeting for the I mean, you should express some of this attitude. That's right. But it, it, it is not about the attitude. It is how you respond to the attitude that matters. To the attitude being shown. That can change the whole perception of the person That's giving that attitude straight away. That's right. amazing. And then we have this beautiful one. Beautiful kids. I mean, this makes me smile straight away. The one on the left, is it a child praying? It's a child expecting expecting okay okay Look, looking on that's right Look and expecting something from whoever he might come in contact in contact with okay as for as for as for children they always expect something from their parents definitely that's right so at least a child who who, who is looking on looking on expecting something from the parents and hoping, hoping, hoping that he gets it. So when you look at the the expression on his eye, yes, he is not ready to let it go. Whatever he expects from the parents, that's right. And the children are 
they are amazing. They, they, they are. They have, they have right, yeah. yeah, they have different characters and different different lifestyle, different pose, and mm. different different ways of getting whatever they need from their parents. So yeah, this work is exactly what you do. Exactly it's, that. Exactly that. that. You know, um, I have three beautiful daughters, and if they wow. want something from me, I know exactly what face they put on, and this is one of them. You know, sometimes they come in a very sad face. Yeah. Sometimes they come in a very convincing face. Yeah. And as a parent, you need to yeah. know what face your 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 child is going to give you. <laughs> and right. I think you 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 brought that out very clearly. Um, but then as adults as well. You know, we are all also in expectancy, isn't it, in our lives. And expectation sure. is not a bad thing. As human no. beings, we should all expect something good from, yeah. from ourselves, number one, and also from, from our fellow human beings. So sure. being in expectation, especially from our Father in heaven, is not mm -hmm. a bad thing at all. Bad thing at all. And it's I think we should continually be in expectation. Sure. Sure. Definitely, sure. definitely. So that I can see that this painting talks to all of us, whether we are children or adult. Expectation is a great thing. And I like the way that, you know, he's actually clenched the fingers as well. He's like, yeah. please, please, you know, give me this thing. <laughs> what about the one on the right hand side? Uh, so the right, the one on the right hand side uh, depicts a group of people who are kind of in kind of a joke atmosphere. Okay. This painting is titled Jokers. Right, 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 it, right. It, it depicts it depicts an atmosphere where everybody is excited. Mm -hmm. Everybody is excited. Nobody's remorse or sad. Yes. When you look at their faces, they are all laughing. That's right. Life. And in this life we have, we are friends who are kind of jovial. And anytime you are around, them, they make you laugh, they make you feel good. I can imagine. And what, what made you paint this one? This work, I got inspired by Koju. There is an artist called Koju Ani. Ani. Okay. Koju Ani. So Koju Ani. I, yes, I, got, I got this inspiration from one of his pieces. So I Amazing. just decided to we kind of put it on the canvas and show it out there. And I think whoever owns this painting will, will be a happy person because oh, yeah. you can't see this painting and not, you know, laugh or be in the atmosphere of joy. I still have it in my possession. It's one of my collections. Amazing. We'll talk about that because you never know who wants to grab it from you. <laughs> so anybody who's watching, if you want a piece from uh, Joseph, I'll be putting out his social media handles. If you have a question to, to ask him personally, feel free to put it in the comment box and we'll be more than happy to read it. But this one is called Jokers and I can feel the atmosphere of joy and happiness in this painting. That's amazing. That's really good. Right. So the question to do with um, African painters is that the rest of the world is now looking at our work in our back in the days, you know, they used to laugh at our, our way of painting, our form of painting and all that. But these days, I think the world has turned their eyes to Africa. What would you advise our fellow African artists to do to get their work out there? All right. Well, thank you. The advice that I have for all the African painters is that is all about the message that you're trying to send across the world. It's about the message, right? Okay. So we we all need the money. Yes. We need the money to produce more works. To produce, to buy materials, to do whatever, to to do the marketing side of it and everything. But most important is the message you're trying to send send across mm. the art world. So That's right. uh, we shouldn't solely focus on the money. Yes. We should focus on what we're trying to portray out there as an African mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the world at large. Because the focus right. is now the focus is now in Africa. Definitely yes. So we should depict who we truly are as 
and Africans. Very authentic. We should be authentic about what we do. Yeah, and we should be proud of ourselves, no matter the color. Yeah. Yes. We are black and proud. Yeah, and proud. And we own it. We own it. It is this ours. Is your melanin, I would say. Melanin, proper <laughs> melanin. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's God who gave it, who gave it to us. That's right. We should own it. We should be proud of it. Mm. So, kind of painting. Yes. You should always have this in mind that we're trying to portray who we are yeah. as an African out there. We shouldn't only chase money and do any other and thing. Any, yes, yes. Especially trying to please another culture rather than right. who we truly are. Who we truly are. Our values and what we stand for. That's it. As, as Africans. That's right. That is That's the right. only method I have for African painters. And, and I and think are, method, yeah. Believe you me, being great out there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Great. Oh yes. Right. We've got a lot of up and coming African painters who have now broken through that ceiling on the international scene. And and yeah. this is why I put up such a show as this to project our image out there a bit more. Um bring all of us together because the the bigger we are as a team of African artists the better we'll be able to tell that African story because it's all about the message, as you said, and it's about the African story that we are trying to tell uh, for generations to come, for generations right. to come. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Right. And I'll you, go back you, and you just... Yeah, carry on. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. It's about unity. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Great. Let's take one more piece of yours, and then we'll talk about the work that you do in your community, basically. Great. Okay. So let's talk about these two. Uh, I know we've talked about women and their role they play in society. Are you sure. uh, paying homage to them with these two paintings? Sure, I am. I mean, I am, as, as I said earlier, I, I always get inspired by them. Yes. And will continue to be inspired by them. Great. As, these two things on your screen talks about how wonderful you are to us as society and as men as well. That's right. Every right. man, whether you are married or not, mm -hmm. women are special to us. They are like Definitely. egg. They are like egg in our hands. We should hold them with care. Yes. So uh, the work on your left is titled Wishful Thinking. Okay. Wishful Thinking. So uh, this is a lady who, who wishes for the best in her life. That's right. She always wishes for the best. The best. In life. The best mm -hmm. in life. So I will encourage you men out there to always wish for the best in this life. In their, in, their, in their marriage, in mm -hmm. their work, in their society. Yeah. Where have yeah. you had mm -hmm. this great mindset? Yes. 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 That's it. So, in terms of your paintings, do you um, paint from life or from imagination? Okay, I paint from imagination. Imagination. That is really good. That is really good. And I can tell that you really communicate really well with your imagination. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. So with all the paintings that you've shown on your screen are from imagination. Amazing, amazing. And what what's the process? How do you go through, without giving too much of your secrets, uh, yeah, but, how do you conceive ideas and then put them on canvas? Okay, uh, so uh, the, the, process, the process is very simple. Before I put something out there on a the canvas, I've already kind of envisaged it in my spirit. Right. I've already envisaged it and always knew what I was going to, I'm, I'm going to put out there on the canvas. So yeah. when I sit by the canvas, 
I knew what I was going to, I'm going to do. I have right. a complete the finished work in mind. So when yes. I sit behind the canvas, I just go straight. Straight to, to the canvas. Straight to the canvas and do whatever I have within my spirit on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I is a spirit. So I always, yes. It's a spirit. So I always pour my spirit on the canvas. That is well true. That so is whatever well you true. whatever piece you see, whatever piece of mind that you see is yes. a bit of it's a bit part of me that you are seeing mm -hmm. on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Every single piece of his is a bit of his spirit that he has put in the count on the canvas. Um, let's talk about your work in your community. Do you? I know that you've set up uh, this gallery, beautiful gallery. And is it open to your community or everyone to come and have a look and buy your pieces? Yes, it's open to everyone. It's Amazing. open to my community. By currently, Amazing. by right. currently, I'm working on it. Okay. So it's closed for now. Obviously. But I will soon open it to the community. This is so amazing uh, to set up a gallery in your community to serve the people and to make sure that when people need good quality art, they have somewhere to go. So we can't wait for you to open it all up again. I know that yeah. you know, you're putting things together at the moment, but God willing, very, very soon, we'll see it. And when it's open, let me know, and we'll okay. do a live stream from your studio as well. I can't wait for that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But thank you so much for your time. If people need uh, to buy your pieces, where, where can they go to? Okay. If someone needs my piece, they can go to Artist Alliance Art Gallery. Artist Alliance. All right. Okay. Okay. Artist Alliance, which is the, the gallery by um, Abladi Glover. Glover. Amazing. And, Amazing. And Oneric Art Gallery. That's it. Oneric Art, Art Gallery as well. Also, and then on, on social media handles, I can display. I have displayed your handles over there as well. Uh, so Instagram, I, I sell my works on Novika as well. All right, okay, that's amazing. That is really good. That is really good. And on Instagram, artist Joe Black, and then Joseph Adibleku, Joe Black as well. Now, the, the, the question that I wanted to ask you. I thought Joe Black was part of your name. I didn't know that it was. <laughs> Can you explain how you came up with that name? Oh, okay. Uh, I picked Joe Black from uh, my name, Joseph Adibleku. Being an, ah, there we go. Being an abstract artist. Yes. I abstract something from the original. <laughs> <laughs> That is really good. So you've got J-O from Joseph? Yeah, J-O from Joseph. And then you've got a black from Adi Bleku. B-L-E-K from Adi Bleku. That's right. That's right. Perfect. 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 So, no, I can't thank you enough for making time to come on this show and um, showing us your beautiful pieces and talking us through life. I see this interview as something that really gave us life, um, life advice. You know, things that will take us far in our lives. So thank you. Thank you so much. Really oh, appreciate okay. that from you. And God bless you. This wouldn't be the first. At some point right. in the future, I'll reach out again and then we can bring right. you the second half. Thank you. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Great. So everyone, thank you so much. That was Joseph Adibleku, popularly known as Joe Black. And he has given us insight into his work. He's given us insight into what he does giving us insight into the beautiful pieces. Now, if you want to know more about the interviews that I do, do well to go to my, uh, my YouTube, where you can see everything to do with the beautiful interviews that I do uh, to do with African artists. That is the link right there on your screen. If you go to YouTube, that's type in imap 75 or just type in my name, Eric Amwakwabwadu, and you see all the various interviews that I've been doing over the months. But thank you so, so much for making time today to come and watch me. And I'll bring you someone special uh, next week. But until then, 
Have a great week and God bless you. See you later. Bye.